I'll get to you. <laughs> Hi, fellas. How we doing? Good. Hey, Joey. This is Mike Brohard. How you doing? I'm doing good, Mike. When you go back and you look at the, the run game this past week, what did you like about the combination of, of Marcus and Ajon, especially Ajon, since it's been a while since he's played running back? Yeah, you know, I think they complement each other really, really well. I thought Marcus did a good job and uh, ran, ran hard. He's a big physical back and, uh, you know, he's faster than you think. Even that, you know, uh, our touchdown run and, and, and early in the second quarter when he bounced outside, he has the speed to score there. And then, you know, Ajon is an explosive kid. And, of course, uh, you know, he's only been at running back for a couple of weeks. You know, he, he was a receiver for us and we kind of moved him in fall camp, if you will. Uh, but I really liked the, the one-two punch and how they complement each other. Um, you know, as we move forward in our run game. So uh, he's, he, he's learning every day and, um, you know, he continues to learn our protections and all that type of stuff. He's kind of natural running the ball, Ajon, uh, but all the little nuances of playing the position, um, he's really improving every day and the more and more reps he gets in practice. You average 4.1 yards in your run game, but only like 3.2 with your traditional run game, i.e. your running backs. What gives you confidence in what you saw that that will improve as you guys move forward this year? Yeah, honestly, I think, you know, like any football team and program, you make a lot of improvement from week one to week two. And we're looking to do that. You know, I think, um, you know, there were some plays that, that, that we left out there in the run game that, that, um, that they could have improved upon, you know, those, those rushing stats um, with our base run game. But I really do think we're going to continue to get better. I thought our kids played, you know, hard up front, uh, played physical. Um, and, and I do think the balance of, of, of inside, outside, and attacking the defense in different, different ways and different angles uh, will help us moving forward. And I think we got to do a little bit better job of that. Okay, we're going to take our first question from Justin Michael of DNVR. Hey, Coach. Justin Michael of DNVR here. Um, one of the things that was a big theme, obviously, in training camp was having to plug and play guys due to COVID-19, contact tracing, all of that. I know you're not the offensive line coach specifically, but how did you feel the offensive line handled things in week one where do they need to improve moving forward? Yeah, honestly, I thought they did they did a really nice job. And um, it, it was kind of a crazy uh, time leading up to, um, you know, our first game and, and a group of our starting offensive line were, were quarantined for, for 10 days. And, and um, so to be honest with you, you know, that, that core group of guys that played hadn't played together uh, very much lead, leading up to the game. And, um, you know, I, I think it's important up front. There's some continuity there and um, just understanding who, you know, who's playing uh, you know, next to you and the calls and the different techniques and all that stuff that goes into it. And I really do think our kids played hard and played well up front. And I really think they're going to continue to get better. I like the group we got. Um, and I think a lot of that comes just to the practice time and the amount of them, um, you know, building trust and continuity together, uh, which we, we've you know, been able to do this week in practice for sure. And then in your opinion, you know, what kind of went wrong for Todd Santeo in the passing game? What did he do well? I know there were some key drops that kind of, you know, didn't do him any favors. And then how did Patrick respond when he came in? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, Ty got off to a good start, you know, and I, not just with his legs. Of course, he did some really good things in the run game and, um, you know, quarterback run game. Naturally, you can balance the box and, and create some numbers for you, for us on offense. And um, he got off to a good start throwing the football too. And, um, you know, definitely there were, there, were, there were a couple drops in there, but there's a couple throws that, uh, he'd be the first to tell you that he would like to have back, and, um, you, and he can make them. And, he, you know, he can run it, of course, but he's a good thrower. And, um, you know, I thought as the game went on, we had a couple um, drives in there late in the, in the second uh, quarter um, that, that kind of cost us. And, and I thought we were, you know, had a good flow and good continuity uh, offensively early. Um, and then we had a couple, like I said, basically three and outs. They weren't exactly three and outs. We got a first down on, on one of the plays. But, you know, three and outs and four and outs that I think put our defense in a bind. And we just kind of got, you know, out of rhythm a little bit. I and mean, we can't do that. we got to trust the plan and understand uh, what we're doing. Uh, but I thought all in all, Toddy, uh, uh, he played well. And there's a couple throws, like I said, he liked to have back. And um, there could have been touchdown throws, you know. And um, those are the big ones. And, of course, they become very noticeable um, when, 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 when it's a throw that you, you can score points on. Uh, in regards to Patrick, I thought he came in and handled himself very well. Um, naturally, um, you, know, uh, you know, we decided that Toddy was going to be our starter for week one. Um, I, I thought he handled it like a grown man and, and was ready to go when his opportunity came. And uh, he knew to, to be ready. And, and when he got out there, he threw the ball well and uh, moved the offense. And, and, of course, we were able to get in the end zone, um, you know, on one of his drives. Okay, we're going to go next to Eddie Hers of the Loving Reporter Herald. Hey, Joey. Eddie with the Reporter Herald here. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? 
Good, man. Good. So just sticking on the quarterback topic for a second, just regardless of who's starting this week moving forward, is it a goal for your staff to kind of find a good balance between Patrick and Toddy? Just knowing, like you said, Patty can really do it with his arm and, you know, Toddy can do it with his legs. Well, you know, I really think, you know, with, with what we're doing on offense, both of them can run our offense. And that, that's the truth. And you know, every week we're going to look at what gives us the best opportunity to win and, and everything else. And, and I'm, I'm excited about our room. I really am. I think they got a really good relationship. They're both really confident in their abilities. I think our team uh, is confident in, in their abilities. And, you know, they're both veterans. You know, of course, um, you know, Tidy just got here, but but uh, was a grad transfer. And, and Pat's been around here for a long, long time. So those guys have seen a lot of football, been in different situations, been starters, been backups. Um, and I think all that, uh, you know, at this point is playing to our advantage because they know how to handle uh, the situation, the adversity, how to, how to, uh, prepare as a starter, how to prepare as a backup, you know, all those things. But but our job as coaches is to put, is put our best players on the field and, get, you know, what gives us the best chance to win on, on a given Saturday. And uh, I'm sure glad that we got both of them in our room. For sure. You know, obviously you guys were a little depleted at wide receiver last week. With that in mind, what could getting Dante and Ty back mean for you guys this week? Well, first of all, just speed. You know, uh, both those guys can really run. And, you uh, you know, in this day and age, you know, you got to be explosive on offense. And, um, you know, realistically, we had nine explosive plays last week, uh, which isn't bad. Uh, but there are some plays out there that, that, that we left out there. But there's also some situations um, that, that uh, you know, we could, you know, can take advantage of. And we got, you know, our, all our speed on the field. And, um, you know, Dante, of course, is a household name and still a young guy. But, but uh, we all know he can run. And Ty's a guy that played some last year that can also really run. So, um, those two guys we, we missed and, and excited to have them back. They've had a great week of practices, uh, a great week of practice this week. And I just think it, it helps us uh, truly be able to accomplish everything we want to do as an offense. Okay, we will go next to Kelly Lyle of the Fort Collins, Colorado. Joey, uh, following up a little bit more, you just talked about the quarterbacks that you think they're both good at running this offense, et cetera. It almost looked like it was two different offenses out there, though, depending on who the quarterback was. Was that just game circumstances, or is this a pretty versatile offense that you're going to tailor it to whichever quarterback's in there based on formations and play calling? Yeah, I, I think we can be very versatile. I, I really do, and, and I mean it when I say both guys can, can run our offense how we want to operate it. And I think some of it was, you know, situation. Of course, it happened to me when, when Pat came in later in the game. We were down. Um, and, and needed to throw the ball if we were going to have a chance. And um, we all know that's what he does really, really well. Um, but uh, the, the game circumstances is also, um, you know, uh, tailored to that. So, uh, you know, both guys can run our offense. I mean that. And, and naturally, every week, based on, you know, the defensive personnel, what they do schematically, uh, we're going to, you know, mix and match it to make sure uh, we give our, our, best, our kids the best chance to have success. Uh, the second thing I wanted to ask a little bit, you've got the two running backs, obviously. Marcus and Ajon played. Who's kind of next in line behind them? Because Coach Adazio has talked about you really need to have three, four guys to play football these days. Yeah, you know, Keelan Herndon and Christian Hunter are the two next guys that, that uh, um, you know, Christian got in the game uh, last week. And, and then Kiwan uh, is a young guy that's a talented kid that uh, he missed some time from, from being quarantined. Um, you know, he's a true freshman. So that, that, that time is very valuable uh, that he missed. But he's a talented kid that we're really excited about. And as we keep, you know, moving forward and get some continuity, uh, those would be the two names and two guys you would see uh, in the backfield uh, besides, um, you know, Marcus and, and uh, Ajan. Thanks. Okay, we will go next to Kevin Lytle of the Fort Collins, Colorado. Hey, Coach, I'm curious, uh, a little bit more kind of the mental side of things with, you know, when guys have to miss time, you know, Dante and Ty obviously being two big names, you know, missing game. Just what are those conversations like? Just, you know, making sure they're, you know, the mental side of being isolated and unable to practice and play obviously is tough on, on everyone. Yeah, I know. It's wild times, and you guys know that. And, um, you know, as we have different groups of guys, you know, that have been quarantined and not not sick, you know, just – to the contact tracing and everything else is we've tried to do a great job of keeping them locked in. Um, they video into meetings um, so that they can watch practice film. And when we're, you know, coaching the guys, it's not like they're uh, gone for 10 days, you know, mentally, you know, but uh, there's nothing like actual reps. You know, we all learn well in the meeting room, but, but there's nothing like, you know, going through it and seeing the different looks and all those things. So uh, I think our guys that have been out um, have done a great job of mentally trying to stay into it. 
now it's a matter of time and just getting back into it physically and getting the flow of it and uh, the rhythm of it and everything else truly on the practice field. So uh, that, that's, that's, you know, that's been good for to get Ty and, and Dante back. And, and then of course, um, you know, we're kind of in the same boat really with the old line leading up to the Fresno and even, even Trey McBride, he was out for a while and we got him back, um, you know, two days before the Fresno game. So uh, it's just been, it's just crazy times and our kids have adapted well and, and uh, we just got to keep moving forward and, and, and keep, uh, keep developing. How much do you guys have to kind of work puzzle pieces of, uh, you know, these guys are roommates, so, you know, they can be in meeting rooms together and, you know, all that type of stuff to make sure that, if, you know, there is one positive in a position group, it doesn't, you know, wipe out everyone. Yeah, no, we're, we're doing, you know, all the right stuff, you know, from, from social distancing and, and, and wearing masks and in our meetings that, um, you know, to, so for those situations, if, if you know, someone did, um, you know, test positive and whatnot, and we're, we're following all the protocols, uh, to make sure um, that, that a position group or whoever wouldn't be wiped out um, because we're doing everything um, the right way from a, from a guideline standpoint. But it's something we talk about all the time and got to be extremely careful uh, uh, with because uh, it, it can happen very fast. Hey, Joey, we have a follow-up from Justin Michael of DNVR. Okay. You know, have two games of film on Wyoming, you know, just watching them, they seem like a defense that kind of bullies opponents, very physical. What stands out to you about them? Does, well, you know, just that. Worry I mean, you? The, their mentality, you know, how they want to play the game of football. I think it starts on both sides of the ball. Of course, I, you know, I haven't watched much of their offense. You know, it's their defense and um, they play downhill. They're aggressive. They're, they're physical. Um, you know, that's the way, they, the way they want to play. They want to stop the run. I mean, they're going to try to outnumber you uh, in the box, you know, whether you're in a spread set or, a, a, you know, a traditional big, you know, two tight end set. They, they want to have an extra hat in there to, to, to uh, stop the run, and, and they, they'll challenge you on the outside too. They'll, they'll press and play man coverage. And they want to be aggressive. And uh, when I mean, I don't necessarily mean that overly aggressive from a blitz package standpoint. I just mean, how, you know, how they play um, and, and load the box and challenge you. Um, and, and more than anything, it's just, you know, they, they know how to play their defense. They, it's, it's not overly complicated. You know how to leverage the ball, and they, they play really good team defense. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Coach, I believe that's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. Oh, no problem. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll get uh, Coach Heater on here. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Joey. Bye, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, uh, Kyle sent me a message that media food has been approved for game day. So I think you've seen that in the email. If you need to order something, just go ahead and, and know that it's been approved. Hey, Chuck, how are we doing today? Uh, doing great. Doing great. This is Mike Rohart from CSU. Uh, Mike, how you doing? It right seemed now? like your defense played a little bit more man-to-man -man than they've done in the past. Is, is that true? And do you feel like that's still an adjustment they're making in the secondary? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I don't know what, totally what they've done in the past, you know, but you know, it's a part of what we do, obviously, and maybe it's more. It's always going to be a part of what we do. It's going to be mixed in there. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it may be different in the past. I'm not sure, but but uh, it's part of what we do. I mean, we hope an early down is about a, a, representing about, a, you know, a fourth of whatever concept of defense we have, you know. And were the breaks that you saw in uh, this past game against Fresno State things that you consider easily corrected? Well, you know, yeah, they need to be, first off, they just flat out need to be corrected, you know, and, uh, you know, they uh, just, um, just some fundamental things, you know, uh, that, you know, aren't good enough and uh, reflected in the first game. So it's important this week that we make improvement in the basic fundamentals and, and the communications and things of that nature, which got us in a bit of trouble last week. So uh, it needs to happen. So hopefully watch that tape and win the game and, and look at the tape and see, you know, measurable improvement that needs to happen you know, uh, for this game. Okay, we'll take our first questions from Kelly Lyle of the Fort Collins, Colorado. Hey, Chuck, first of all, just a quick follow-up on kind of some of the breakdowns that happened at Fresno State. Was that, was it more recognition, communication, or execution that kind of broke down? Probably a little bit of all of it, you know, but I know we were talking to our defense the other day and say, you know, we had two situations where we were in a no deep pressure. It means your max pressure, right? And uh, the quarterback had 0.5 seconds to throw the ball. Usually the ball's out of a guy's hand at 0 0.3, no more, because of just fundamental things. You know, we had a, you know, an end who came inside to the wide side of the field. We haven't had an end who ran past the quarterback and allowed that kid to flush. And 
those types of things. I mean, you don't really see those. You see the ball being thrown and completed. But if you're in a no deep pressure, <laughs> quarterback has five seconds to the ball. There's no defense really built for all that. So it's that kind of stuff. Now those those are, as mentioned earlier, those are correctable. You know, those things are things that you're you're focused on and and uh, making sure that you do correct them. But it's it's all the things that they talk about. You know, communication. You know, just uh, technique and um, and just the fundamentals of, of something as simple as pocket integrity you know of making sure that the, if you're on the edge of the, of the pocket that you don't go past the quarterback and you certainly don't come inside if if you have no one to, to cover for you the wide side of the field. those are those are basic fundamentals but those things got us in trouble and those are some of the results of the of the big chunk plays that being said there's still no excuse for third down i mean you, know, you got third down and 10 plus that's a that's a high percentage win for the defense and if you can't get off the field on third down and 10 plus you work really hard to get teams into that position and, and you've got a problem and consequently, we had a we had a problem, particularly in the first half. You know, I think we settled down a little bit in the second half, but particularly in the first half, that was a that was a major issue. Uh, second thing I wanted to ask you: this Wyoming team clearly they run the ball. There's no secret about it. They're going to run, run, run. How does that change the way you game plan for them defensively versus what you saw with Fresno State, which had a little bit more balance, maybe? Yeah. Well. You know, the thing about a great running team is they normally, if they're really good offensively, they have a great play-action passing game off of it. And I think that's the part on early down. You know, you can gang up on the run, which you, you, know, you feel like you need to do at times. But then they've got the ability to go one-on-one. They've got a, a good receiver, number five, who's kind of emerging for them. A guy they want to get the ball to down the field. So that's the challenge for us is to you know, make sure we, we got enough people to stop the run, you know, which really wasn't a significant problem last last week. I mean, they had, what, 80 yards rushing, and one of them was on a 25-yard run that, 35 yard run that we just missed a tackle on. You know? It's that, so hopefully we'll be, uh, we need to be at that salty this week on the run because that's that's the first choice on their part. But the play action passing game, the big chunk plays, the explosive plays, being able to, if we can stop the run and minimize those plays, then you know, we should have a, a, a much better day. But that's the challenge of any good running team is there, they always have a complement with a good play action passing game. Okay, we're going to go right. next to. Uh, Dixon Lawson from KCSU. Hey, Coach Dixon Lawson um, from Dixon. KCSU Sports. What kind of extra pre preparations are the DBs conducting to help with their earlier or the early struggles in Week One headed yeah, into well, Week Two? Yeah, we've made a real uh, uh, emphasis on communication. There were a couple of communication errors that that resulted in some of the busts. So, uh, you know, making sure we get lined up, making sure we communicate. And making sure that which, which should lead to execution. I think the communication piece of it, you know, very, very critical. And then just the you know, fundamentals and tackling. You know, we had a couple of breakdowns in tackling, and, and uh, that's an emphasis always, every day. But, but uh, again, the correlation between what we've talked about and how we've taught things wasn't at a high enough rate. You know, there wasn't enough consistency between what we teach, what we focus on, and what we saw on the tape. So hopefully, the tackling and the communication, those two things would would significantly improve our efforts uh, to get that done on Thursday night. And you kind of mentioned um, big plays or uh, a lot of those little communication errors. What are you going to specifically try and do in practice to change these things and kind of fix these errors? Well, making sure that, that those things happen in practice. You know, make sure you put them in the tough situations when you put them in the, the practice, you know, scripts and so forth that make sure you've got those tough, those tough situations in the scripts so they're actually getting to work on it and making sure that we – you know, you'll use whatever uh, tools we have in our tool bag, you know, to, to better, uh, you know, better uh, you know, defend you know, the things that happened to us on Saturday. So we're, we're hitting all those things really hard, and, and uh, it needs to happen. Start, start, start. Thank you, Coach. We're going to go next to Eddie Hers of the Loveland Reporter Herald. Hey, Coach, kind of like you were mentioning before, you know, besides like a big run or two from Ronnie Rivers, Fresno State's ground game wasn't really a problem. Just with that in mind, what do you feel like your defense specifically executed really well to stop in Fresno State's ground game? Well, I think, I think we got good players up front. I think those guys are good players. You know, that's why we need to be a better defense than what we were, we, we, what we were last week because I think it's a good group of guys for this league. You know, so I think they more than held their own up in there. And, we kind of let him go a little bit in the second half, and so we got some pass rush. We got four sacks, mostly in that, I think, the second half. And those guys, those guys are pulling their weight. You know, they're, they're the bell cows of our defense, you know, veteran players, et cetera. But those guys are pulling their weight. We, we need to do the rest of it on the back end. Make does, sure that give, does that give you a little confidence, though, just knowing, yeah, Wyoming's good at running the ball, but 
you guys were good at stopping the run last week, and obviously Wyoming's going to, you know, jam it up the middle a lot. Well, I mean, that's that's going to be the, the battle royale, you know. I mean, I'm sure they feel that that's the strength of their team, you know. So, I mean, there's other people involved in the run game. There's linebackers involved, obviously, and particularly safeties involved in the running games. So all those guys have to have to fit the run properly and play their role in it. And uh, those up front guys really help us. That's what Don Don Shuler said they are the bell cows of our defense. Other pieces need to fit together, you know. So linebackers and safeties need to fit to the run as well. So, you know, that operating at a higher level of execution, you know, I mean, that's that's the key. The key to defense is executing the defense. You know, sometimes they they have a play that's a little bit better than defense you have lined up, and you tackle it, and get it on the ground, play the next play. But when you should have it, when you got when you got them in third and ten, when you got them in zero blitz, and people run through and and untouched, and a ball flushes outside because someone's not where they need to be, you know that's that's bad defense. It's bad fundamentals. So those are all the things that um, we need to make, a, as I mentioned before, a significant improvement upon this week. Okay, Coach, we're going to move next to Justin Michael of DNVR. In some ways, have you been impressed with the way that Levi Williams has been able to step in at quarterback for Wyoming and does his ability to pass the ball vertically down the field potentially make him, you know, even more dangerous than Sean Chambers, just given that they have more balance? Yeah, well, I mean, he, he, I think he started against us last year, number 15. So he's, he's had a lot of football. Uh, he's played a lot of football for them, you know, for different reasons. So, yeah, I mean, he's a big kid. He's a strong guy. He's got to string, throw the ball over the top of coverage, which, which again, gets back to the play action part of things when you're, you know, when you're fitting the run so aggressively. Now you've got the opportunity to throw the ball down the football field. So it's, he's a nice compliment to what they do. And, and it doesn't, doesn't uh, you know, inhibit them running the football. I mean, they'll run him in particular situations. They have a, a run game offensively for the quarterback. And, and he, he more than – carries his load when he's doing that. So uh, he, he, he's, a, he's a good player. And, and like I say, the passing aspect for sure. And then, and again, they, they do run the ball with him as well to, to get in some of their, their specific schemes in, in certain situations. So, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's done a nice job for them and he'll be a challenge for us for sure. Sounds like there's a lot of room for improvement in the secondary as well as the linebacking core. Was there anyone in that first game that stood out to you positively? For us, yeah, well, I, I thought um, Quinn Brennan played a good, solid football game, you know, for us. I mean, I, I looked at me, I, I graded my guys on just, do you make the play or do you, do you not make the play? You know, he, he rated a high, a high percentage of making plays. It means you're not missing, make, means you're making your tackles, not missing your tackles. It means you're making a play on the ball, not, 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 not playing, making the play on the ball. So I thought he played well for us in the back end. I, I think the corners were, you know, okay. The corners, you know, again, you got to have. You know, I think held up okay, you know, quite frankly, against uh, good skilled players. And, and you know, but again, if, you, if you're in coverage for five seconds, I don't care what coverage you're in, it's difficult to hold your coverage for five seconds. I mean, like I say, you put put guys in that kind of stress, you know, you're fighting for your life out there. So I thought the corners, you know, more than did their part. Uh, I was impressed with uh, the effort of um, Quinn Brennan. And uh, so we just got to keep getting more guys playing at a high, high rate, high level. We got one more follow up from Kelly Lyle of the Fort Collins, Colorado. Chuck, I just wanted to ask you. Obviously, it's been a little while uh, since your previous stint at Colorado State, but uh, what are your memories of the Border War, and uh, how do they? Just kind of, can you share what you think about this game and this rivalry? Well, I mean, Joe Tiller was the coach <laughs> back in a previous lifetime, and yeah, it was always it was a big game, big deal. I mean, rival games are that way. I mean, usually, every team has a rival. Uh, opponent. You know, they certainly were, were ours and, um, you know, we battled with them. And I don't think we won either year, but they were still a solid football team in those days. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's always that game. You get a little extra pep, you know, on your walk and, um, and a little more focus, you know, for this kind of a game. And, and it should mean something to you. You know, and if you haven't won in five years, it should really mean something. To you. You, run, you run the risk of it no longer being a rivalry game if you don't win, <laughs> you know. So you got to win games to make it that kind of rival games are like back and forth kinds of, of games. So it's important for all the reasons uh, mentioned for a rivalry game, but we have great respect for their program, what they've done, and they've been doing it pretty consistently for a long time up there. So to their credit. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. That's uh, you're done with your version of Meet the Press this week. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.